Before we begin the video, I'd like to give a big shout out to our most recent Patreon supporters Snake VR, Luis Alvarez, Max Ratliff, Landon Ledeau, Michael Abeta, and Goyulas200. Thank you so much for your support. And if you want to support us on Patreon, feel free to click the link down below in the description to find out more. Thanks again. Go! <laughs> yeah. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, you are officially watching three corn heads flip out over the fact that there is a new <laughs> yeah. corn song out right now. Just got released with an official visualizer uh, called You'll Never Find Me. So if you're a metal elitist and you think that corn sucks because they're new metal. Oh man, suck yeah. a big old eat yeah. eat every eat every piece of my ass. Honestly. Every yeah, I really don't give a fuck. Piece. I love metal yes. and I love dude, corn. Corn so, and that's okay. Was one of those bands as a young dude that just like fucking changed everything for me. Yeah. Changed well, everything. Apparently well, a couple people in the comments have told me I look like Jonathan Davis too. Yeah, so yes, you do. thank you for yes, the compliment. You do. He does. Well and also I will say this. I will say this about about corn. They made it more about the rhythm instead of the melody. And you yeah. know what? I'm fine with that because that's what rap does. Rap always makes it about the rhythm. Oh man! And if and they infuse well, that's kind that, of a new metal thing. It's yeah. like it's got a lot of hip hop influences. It's, in, yeah. it's an infusion. Corn of definitely it. does. And corn, Lincoln Park, Limp Biscuit. Uh, Limp Biscuit. Which, if you want to say shit about Limp Biscuit, go right ahead. I don't really care. Uh, I'm not as big, near, nearly as like big a fan $3 of that Three dollar bill, y'all, but... to Chocolate Starfish. That band was the fucking shit. They in were. My opinion. I just yeah. like break stuff. Yeah, break stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah break, that's and, a three dollar bill. The heavier rolling song. Counterfeit, was not bad. dude. Oh yeah, oh yeah, Counterfeit. Significant Such other. Song. Such a good yeah. song. Signi or significant other. Actually, take that back. Significant other through. Uh, uh, no, what was three dollar bill before significant? Three dollar bill was their first. Okay. Was their first big it had album. faith on it. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah. So from three dollar bill y'all to chocolate starfish. Yeah, they released three albums that, in my opinion, were pretty damn good. Corn, uh, they haven't really released a terrible album, but I will say they have released albums that have been a little bit disappointing. Untouchables was pretty good, although the one before they, started to... uh, they did the Path of Totality. Yeah. That one was not too memorable to me, but no, other than yeah, that, I've I liked, hated the I've liked the Untitled, the Untitled, oh, I, Narcissistic I even, Cannibal. I, I love shit. those, like, but I have no problem with dubstep. So I just it wasn't corn to me. It didn't feel like the way corn has always made me feel my whole life. And well, I still liked does. it a lot. Well, yeah, their new yeah. shit. Ever since uh, Head came back into the mix, it's yeah. just like they've got this new energy again. Yeah, and it's I'm awesome. glad. Yeah, I'm glad too. because. Head actually, I think, completes the band. I know a lot of people say, hey, what about David Silvera? Silvera knew what he was doing when he quit the band. He knew what he was doing, and he wanted out of it. That's on him. And if you ask me, Ray Lugier actually does pretty good. He actually does pretty good filling in and has actually come into his own as a drummer with Korn because he's been with him now, what, almost 10 years? Yeah. I mean, as at least as a drum tech. And a lot, and a lot of people are saying that Korn needs to just go back to the way they used to be. They can't. This is this isn't a fucking time machine. They kind of come close. Well, they well they haven't like fully tried to replicate what they did. No, it's you all see, new shit. Well, that but you see that's the problem where and Lincoln it's actually Park a little bit into. heavier. Well, that's the thing that Lincoln Park ran into. Lincoln Park when they did the hunting party, uh, you could actually hear Mike Shinoda in the in the studio yelling at Brad Delson, be like, "Hey man, play a riff like you play like you were 19 years old. Go back to hybrid theory, man. Go back to hybrid theory." <laughs> and it and it didn't turn out too good. Hunting Party was not a good album, in my opinion. Bands kind of have to evolve the way yeah. they evolve. Yeah. And you can't really change a lot about that. I think it's pretty fucking cool that Slipknot put out a song that does sound like Iowa. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, that and new, I'm, their new stuff I'm pretty stoked really to hear good. like all of their new album, because I, I can't remember if it's out yet or if it's coming out soon. But like they, they're definitely one of those bands that seem to have hit like Rewind to an extent, and yeah. it worked really well. Well, yeah, well, um, they found something in their old stuff. It's a lot like, I hate making this comparison, but it's a lot like how U2 uh, reinvigorated themselves when they, uh, I think it was when uh, when their guitarist, The Edge, actually brought out his old wood, his old wood grain Gibson Explorer that he played on their two best albums. And he actually was just like, he was like, I want to use this guitar again. I really want, I really think there are more sounds I can get out of it. 
and he used it, and they did uh, "All You Can Leave Behind," which is a lot of people mm-hmm. say is their their third best album after "Akatung Baby" and "Joshua Tree." And uh, personally, I think people who go back to those moments where they actually, in reflection, in reflection of how they used to be, of, of how the world was, and how they understand how the world works now. I mean, we're all idealists when we're young. Yeah. We're all idealists in our own way. But as age wears on us and we become aware of the reality that we are in, we start to realize that we can make an impact on the world, just not as much as we want to. I yeah. mean, I don't want a hungry belly in the world. I don't want a child soldier in Africa. I can't do anything to stop it. I can't. The world has to do something about it. And the only way you can do that is to try and make the world a better place than when you came into it. Leave this world in a better state than when you came into it. There's a face-to-face song about that, which you just said, about being young and thinking, you know, the opening lyrics are like, In 95 when this was new, I didn't really have a clue. I thought the world could change with the right song. And it's just all about, it's just like shooting at the moon. Hit or miss, it makes no difference because you're really not going to hit it. Yeah. There's a Chris Porter bit, bit, I think, on the newer album that he put out, too, where he's uh, just like talking about the people that are growing up in college and they're like, I'm going to change the world. And he's like, eh, the fuck you are. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I'm going to yeah. change the world for the better. No, you're probably not. You're probably just going to That yell divorce is going to change everybody involves world. Oh, <laughs> damn. And that's son. about it. Yeah. So anyway, we... <laughs> but do what you can is yeah. basically the moral of this. It's just... Yeah, do you're not going to you end world hunger by yourself, but if you have the opportunity to work towards something that might help out and do it. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I believe that 100%. So we have the new corn song here called You'll Never Find Me, the official <laughs> visualizer. We have it. Let's get it up on screen and let's listen and let's watch. Hell yeah. Here I want to move my mic a little bit. We, we yeah, yeah. yeah. Here it. we go. <laughs> Three, two, one. this so far i am too i just can't hear jonathan davis enough yeah he's not quite loud enough on this tv yeah well this tv doesn't have the best audio we'll have to go listen to this on my car stereo after we get done doing this get some good depth on it i think i got the sound locked down the other day on it Mixed with wire art. Oh mm. shit! You never find me. Oh boy, what do we got? Yeah. Kind of reminds me of some of the old corn songs. Dude, I'm it's telling you. That... Oh. 
Harry people Bill were worried Harry they weren't gonna go back like to their old sound after that duel, uh, Path of Totality album too. Hearing them killing it like this is just fucking awesome, man. Because there, it was a while where they weren't doing this kind of shit. God damn, dude. Like, you guys were talking about the drummer. Like, that was some sick drum parts. Yeah, Ray yeah. Luz, like I said, dude, Ray Lugier is is a killer drummer. It's just it took him a few albums to really come into his own. Fuck yeah. And, and people stopped comparing him to Dave Silvera. I mean, Dave's actually Was Dave still get, with him on um, See You on the Other Side? Um, I think uh, he actually left uh, when... See, let's actually look. I think he left in 2006. That's been a long time ago because we were still in my old church because I remember talking to Zach about that. Yeah, let's actually um, look and see when Dave Silvera left. Let's go to Wikipedia and go to the corn page. There they are. Corn. Uh, so... Yeah, in 2007, uh, he, uh, he is when he replaced him. So... And they did see you on the other side in... Let's see... Oh. Uh, See, on the other side, it was, that was his that last, was his album, last yeah. album, yeah. Did I he, do, like, uh, we were always talking about the drum part in uh, Coming Undone, I think. Yeah. It was just like, that, he had to be so bored during that song. Probably. It's because I think Korn was trying to experiment with new sounds to try and find something. Mm. But I'd Drums say... Drums were never really something I, like, that jumped out at me in Korn songs. They were just doing their job, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But, like, the drums actually jumped out at me in this one, and that's pretty cool. Well, so they had two albums without head. They had... Actually, no, they had three albums. is when, it's, it, when the sound changed for me. Yeah, because Take a and Look in the Mirror, See You on the Other Side, Untitled Album... Three Path of Totality. See you on the other side was when they started playing them on the radio. The all Serenity the time. And of Suffering. like, oh, have you heard this new chord yeah, band? Yeah, that's when I got back into what they were doing. That yeah. album is what changed my paradigm was... shifts when uh, when Head came back. I just yeah. remember being in high school. People were like, oh, have you heard that new band Corn on the radio? And I'm just like, I want to slap you right now. Like, wait, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hearing that, I'm just like, what? New band? What? Yeah. No. No. I was lucky enough to have an older cousin that was like. This is what's cool. And I was like, cool. You remember teenager, the first you time know. I heard about corn was actually in the fifth grade. So Yeah, corn <laughs> is about the same time for me. Uh, no, no, I heard of them before school. that because I forgot. I think my next door neighbor actually used to listen to them. Er, it, yeah. For me, it was early middle school. It was like fourth grade. Uh, my friend uh, actually is Andrew Martin. I don't know if you remember yes, him Yes, I do. Yeah, Big Sexy. Uh, yeah. He uh, he actually brought over a corn album, uh, Burned on a CD. Mm. Uh, that dates at fourth grade. Napster. Right Yes, Napster status, exactly. Baby. Uh, he burned it on a CD and he gave it to me. And it, I think it was, uh, yeah, it was Follow the Leader, actually. Mm. And I was just like, what is this? Yes. I love this. And I listened yeah. to it pretty much from beginning to end on repeat for about a week. That's still my like, favorite Damn. one. I heard like, Adidas at seven years old. So oh. I, was, I was just like, oh, these guys are the coolest. They don't care about anything. They said exactly. sex a whole bunch in this song. <laughs> yes. And they're Actually, trying to sex uh, everybody, whatever that is. You know? Where I only started listening to them, like, uh, like, like, I became a fan of them in high school. And I didn't have, like, a lot of ways to get a hold of a lot of music mm. back then. And where they already had a pretty substantial discography, it yes. took me forever to listen to a lot of their songs. And I only actually listened to Adidas for the first time, I think, like, four or five years ago. Whoa. I'm, but, I'm amazed that Blind came out in 1994. Yeah, man. I've known about Korn. For, I mean, when I was seven years me. old, yeah. I knew about them, dude. So, yeah. like, 96. Blind's still a badass song to, to this yeah, day. Yeah, it is. Oh, my God. They've so got so much good ladders. shit on there. Yep. <laughs> Follow the leader. The Got the light. Hell the yeah. Durst. Freak on a leash. All, all of the family is great. Children of the Durst. corn, dude. Yes, there it is with Ice Cube. Yeah. Hell yeah. And then, of course, uh, issues corn. falling away from me Fuck make me mad. Hit your ass in the head with my 4D. <laughs> There's going to be more of me at school. Already know. Or what is it? Uh, class clown. Already know I'm a star. Generation triple X. We all about the weed smoking and kiki sex. <laughs> I mean, I, he killed Good that shit, shit, dude. Good shit. I, I, I love, love that fucking song, man. So. 
Here to Stay was actually their first break. Oh, damn. I wow. didn't realize that uh, Falling Away From Me came out before uh, Right Now. And Hell stuff. yeah, dude. Oh, yeah, dude. Right Now, that was Take a Look in the Mirror. That was Y'all the last. single? Uh, I thought that was an older one, too. Than it yeah, because uh, Here to Stay and Did My Time were their first two songs that, that made yeah. it onto the Hot 100. Yeah. That's shocking to me. I mean. They've stayed consistently pretty bad. Here's how I feel about it, Okay. Follow the Leader is one of the greatest metal albums of all time. No doubt. And No doubt. You know, just like the Marshall Mathers LP was one of the greatest hip-hop albums of all time. They happened at the... you got to think, like, the charts that these albums were coming out on that were some of their best yeah. were also going against some of the last big-time music to ever happen True. in that way where True. they're selling albums and on those charts and you know what i'm saying it didn't have anything to do with streaming or anything it was just straight selling physical cds and and to contend with what they had to contend with of the music that was coming out at that point yeah I actually mean, yeah let me actually go back and look at their album sales so the first corn album has two million sold follow the leader highest selling uh yeah, and everything, because every you gotta think everything after like two thousand five to now, digital has taken a huge bite out of it, and they don't really yeah. have a way. To oh my god, it. yeah. See on the other side was super popular for the singles on it. But oh yeah, but yeah, it only sold a million albums time, so. in the, and uh, but as you can see here, you know, first few albums, I mean, they sold a shit ton. I mean, two million, two million, five. I, mean, I million. personally still bought a physical copy of Follow the Leader and like. 2010 so oh dude, <laughs> dude yeah <laughs> but so good me, but you, you, this also comes from a band that was the last hurrah of physical media yes because lincoln park's hybrid theory up until adele mm -hmm. was the last official album yep. to sell 10 million copies the last official i just that, studied that in class yeah the last week. album was hybrid theory Fuck before adele, adele. but yeah, I know, I know. Well, it's a side note. Sidebar. I bar. actually had a physical copy of Hybrid Theory when I was a Same here. I've got it on vinyl. So. Oh, yeah, you do. You yes, do, do have it on vinyl. That's awesome. I nice. love it. It's one of my favorite albums ever. I would also agree that's one of the greatest metal albums of all time. <laughs> I'd say at least say it, gr agree. greatest new metal albums. For well, sure. I actually, if there's actually talk that Korn is looking to restart the Family Values Tour. They've been talking about that for like the last ever. two or three yeah. years. But I would love that. I uh, would love it too because... Corn headlining the Family Values to Tour see. with all these other bands. Actually, you could do the triple leg set like they used to do. Uh, they do, you know, Corn on leading on one, Slipknot leading on another, and you know you could have these old school bands pretty much being the foothold. Whereas I have these a new bands, big list of in. bands I would love to see on something like that. Yeah, and like they I want to get they the should Tom like twisted to something like uh, that. I I'm I'm still um, dying to get me a Family Values T-shirt, man. Oh man, I love those. If I we could them. only go in a time machine and just see, you know, Romstein, Orgy. Yeah. Yes. Um, mushroom Lint, Head. Yeah, Mushroom Head. I've Lint seen Mushroom Biscuit, Head live and they're fucking badass. Yes. Corn, yeah. obviously. <laughs> mushroom Head kicks. Slipknot, way back when. Method Man and Red Man. Yeah, Method and Red. Oh, you yeah. know, they were cool with them. Yeah, dude. Um, absolutely. Just The band I saw shows, with Mushroom man. Head, I always forget their name, but they're also a really badass new metal band. Uh, they're one of the lesser known ones, but they're a great one. Uh, what were they called? Um, Head P.E. Yeah, uh, P. yeah, I remember really them. Badass. Yep, I remember them. And they'd be good for the Family Values Tour as yes, well. Yes, they would. Um, plus, there's a new wave of new metal. I don't for know real? if you guys know right now. Yeah, you actually features like to hear some, some really it. badass bands like um, Cane Hill and um, Ocean Grove. Like, there's a, a style to it that's, like, reminiscent of the old stuff still, but, like, still its own thing to an extent. Yeah. And it's really good stuff as well. And, like, all cool those deal. bands, it would be awesome to see Korn invite them to play, you know, their newer new metal along with the old guys that Yeah, you gotta it. show me that stuff. Yeah, oh, definitely. Yeah. Like, I'll, I'll let you check it out. Oh, yeah. Definitely, Korn, man. I, they're killer, dude. They're this absolute song was killers. was fucking bonkers. It was. Yeah. It was. I mean, this was all the good. way through. This, this was, was a good. great song. I'm going to put mean, this shit on my playlist. And it's a band I've always been rooting like right for, now. man. And I can't yeah. lie, there was a dry spell there for me, for my taste. Specifically, you know, some of the dubstep. After 2005 some, until yeah, 2013. And it like wasn't until, yeah, around 2013, 16-ish, I started hearing some shit from them, and I was like, 
man, I don't remember this off of, you know, Life, Life is, is Peachy, Peachy or, or Follow the Leader or, or yeah. Issues. Issues, yeah. What is this? And I found out that they were cranking out tunes that just, like, that was the shit that was missing. That's yeah. what we needed. Well, yeah. A lot of people say that, uh, a lot of people say that, uh, let's see, which one is it? It's uh, Loss of Innocence, I oh. believe. Uh, or no, no, Corn 3, Remember Who You Are, because... They had uh they had the first one, corn, and then they mm-hmm. had Follow the Leader, which is part <clears> two, <throat> and then they did uh and then they did Corn Three, Remember Who You Are. So that's uh, where they tried to go back to their raw sound, and I think that was when they started to patch stuff up with Head, because in two thousand eleven, I believe, Head played with them. He played uh Blind with mm-hmm. them live on stage. Yeah. And everyone was just blown away because they couldn't believe Head was back on stage with them. And then if, then two years later Head was they asked Head if he'd want to rejoin and Head was just like, Yeah, man, I'd love to Because the guys had calmed down a lot. They they had kids and they were and they were a lot more stable. Head the reason Head quit is because he saw himself becoming self destructive. Yeah. In which he valued <clears throat> he valued him and his family more than he did the band at that point. And now that his children have grown up enough to where he knows that he can go on the road and not have to worry about them, I think now he's more comfortable now than ever. I don't yeah. know if it's true or not, but like people were telling me back when he quit that it was also partially to do with his Christian values and well, stuff as well. Not re- well, his Christianity is something he's always been... Uh, well, whenever you ask him about it, he'll talk about it. But he's never been one who's just been like, "You need Jesus, man. You need Jesus." He's never been one of those. Yeah. And was it not the destructive other members of the band getting way too fucked up? Well, and shit? Monkey, he was trying to get away uh, from as it. he put, as I heard a lot of people say, Monkey and Jonathan and Fieldy were at, were the worst for it. David was David wasn't as bad, but he could get that bad if he was around them long enough. But but the guys have calmed down a lot since yeah. then because they're all in their 40s now and they realize we can still make some great music it's just we can't we don't have the we don't have the veracity that we had to play through a hangover like we used to or to play through boy let me tell you <laughs> doing anything through a hangover can be rough i couldn't imagine being jonathan davis through a hangover trying to perform oh yeah, yeah. And he's actually calmed down a bit, and he, I think the final nail in the coffin for him was when, uh, I think it was his wife uh, pretty much uh, killed herself, and that was a sad thing, man, because yeah, that was Jonathan, super fu- sad. yeah, it was super fucked up, but yeah, John, let's... I read a lot of details into that, that just like, you can't help but pour your heart out for that guy, man. Yeah, yeah man. He's had cause... some rough shit go down. <laughs> yeah, from some very rough shit. Uh, just uh, listening numbers on Spotify are kind of cool. Um, I, I was actually surprised to see that Coming Undone has twice as many listens as Twisted Transistor. Yeah. Because um, Twisted Transistor was the one that they, they played on the radio, like, the most, it seemed like. But I guess they started playing Coming Undone more after that. Holy shit. But Coming Undone is in second place with 85 million listens. Freak on a Leash is in first place with 132 million. Hell yeah, dude. <laughs> Hell yeah. That's a lot of listens for that Freak one on, song. Well, and they get paid for those. Yeah. They get paid a certain yeah. amount so for listen listens. up, people. It's a badass song. Listen to Corn on Spotify on every device that you own. Go! <laughs> All at the same time. <laughs> yes. Pay those people. Yeah. I know they're already rich. Keep making them richer. Because I love it. I those love are it. the rich celebrities you got to support. Yeah. And, no doubt. Yeah. So... Rather Honestly, than a certain other trending one that you listened to and reviewed recently. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Whether or not that's oh. on the channel yet, you guys will see. <laughs> yeah. We'll see how that all turns out. But right now, I mean, I'm glad that this, I'm glad that this, this was awesome. Uh, this was as awesome as we thought it was going to be. Yeah. yeah. This was a good song. Yes, This was it a is. really, really good song. And we recommend you all check it out as well. Hell, listen to it in your car so you can get a good feel for the sound because we can't really get a good feel for the sound because the, the speakers on this TV, they're not layered for good, like, good multi-layered music. We're, we're having to add a little bit of an imagination to it as well. But yeah. and <laughs> At least we have a good imagination. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Which, <clears throat> which when it's when it's a riff that good and a I can't song wait that to go good, out and bump put it, it in on your car. my subwoofer, Dude. though. Oh, yeah. It's going to be badass. That's going to be wicked. Don't take Jonathan Davis from me. I got to no. hear his voice TV. Damn you. <laughs> <laughs> we still heard it. It's just not as good. So, all right. Until next time, everybody, that's going to do it. Signing off. I'm Nate. I'm Nick. I'm Chad.
And y'all keep rocking in the real world, and we'll see you later. Peace out. Thank <laughs> you.